All his righteousness that he have done shall not be mentioned. God going to even forget your righteousness. Some people say, wow. That's kind of, even Israel was saying, that ain't real, that don't sound fair, God. You know, they did pretty good for a while. But they got to, you got to continue. You got to, that's why the Bible say endure to the end. That's why I say hold fast what you have. That's why I say overcome, overcome. You got to do it to the end. Or else you, you, you did, did what you warned of. You lost the faith. So how can you lose faith if it didn't, if it didn't matter what you did? How can you lose it? Like, no, you go back out and you start doing what you used to do. You ain't thinking about the Lord no more. You can lose that. So you're not saved until the end, until you endure. So God is fair. He give the wicked a chance to change and be right. But he give the righteous a chance to change and be wicked. That's fair. He said, hey, I'm letting you choose. How you want to end up. Go ahead. What verse you at? In the middle of 24. Okay. All his righteous that he have done shall not be mentioned. Uh -huh. In his trespass that he have trespassed and in his sin that he have sinned, in them shall he die. See, he's going to forget that righteousness. But that's fair because I'm glad he's going to forget my wickedness. Yes, Go ahead. 25. Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Uh-huh. Here now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal, are not your ways unequal? Equal means fair. See, they said it. They said, that ain't fair. I did good for a while. I just got tired. <laughs> Too bad. Oh, well. Go ahead. When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and dieth in them. See, the Lord, if he catch you. See, if you go out the back door, we already read where you could sin. He said, don't sin, but if any man sin, we got an advocate. See, making a mistake and sinning is one thing, but just going back sinning at will. Letting go any semblance of, of trying to serve God. That's when you're in trouble. That's what he's talking about. And the Lord will let you go, and you won't be able to get back, and you will die in your sins. That's what he warned you of. That's a scary thought. He said, when a righteous man turned away from his righteousness and committed iniquity and died in them. See, you can make a mistake and you can repent and get that together and say, okay, Lord, bust you upside the head, that'll be over with. He chastised you, you still on the path to life. But if you fall down and don't get up and continue to sin and then you die in them, he said, what? For his iniquity that he have done, shall he die. He said, he's going to die again. That's two deaths in that verse. You didn't see that, did you? Read it again. That's two deaths in that verse. Because it's not just one death that we got to worry about. We all got the first one coming. The second death is the one we trying to avoid now. That's the one. Read it again, 26. When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committed iniquity and dieth in them. And dieth in his sin. Go ahead. For his iniquity that he have done shall he die. See, he's going to die in the lake of fire. But go ahead, 27. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. See, because he repented. Go ahead. Because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live and he shall not die. Sound like it's based on you obeying the law. Go ahead. Yet saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Go ahead. Therefore will I judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways. He said he's going to judge God. you according to your ways, said the Lord God. That's what God said he's going to do. And he's going to do everybody that way. Judge us according to our ways. Go ahead. Repent. And turn yourselves from all your transgressions so iniquity shall not be your ruin. See, repentance is in the Old Testament, isn't it? And turn yourselves from all your transgressions. That's sin. So iniquity won't be your ruin. Go ahead, 31. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed. And make you a new heart and a new spirit. 
For why will ye die, O house of Israel? See what he said? You got to do this. See, people, people say, God, make me. Well, God's trying to make you. He's telling you how to make yourself, right? How to repent. He's telling you that. He even said, make you a new heart and a new spirit. But if you're going to have a new heart, brother, so if you're going to have a new spirit, or as the New Testament says, you're going to be a new creature. It got to be according to some criteria. Now, what's the criteria for being new? The law. The same old law. Go ahead. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that died. Lord, say, I don't want to kill you. Don't make me. I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth. Go ahead. Say if the Lord God. So do me a favor and what? Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Turn yourselves and live ye. Matthew 19. So we see to get life, it's all about the law too, isn't it? Love and life embodied in God's law. It's all wrapped up in the law. You can call on Jesus all you want. Don't you know the Bible said a lot of people are going to call on him in judgment day. Say, Lord, I knew you. I was in church. I cast out devils. See, that's what you got a, a lot of false prophets doing now, saying they healing and casting out devils. Jesus said he's going to tell those people, I never knew you. That's going to be a hard pill to swallow, but they're going to swallow it. Matthew 19 and verse 16. Go ahead. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? See, we read the same counterpart in this scripture earlier. Same thing from another standpoint. What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? A very important question, right? Go ahead. And he saith unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. Uh -huh. He said, well, don't call me good. See, Jesus knew he had gave up being God. He was God in the beginning, but he had became a flesh and blood man. And that's, that's biblical. But then he said, there's none good but one. That's God. But let me answer your question. But if but, thou would, what? But if thou would enter into life, keep the commandments. He keep referring people to the commandments. He told the other guy, well, what, what you read in the law? How you read, man? And he said, well, love the Lord. Now, same thing, if you were in an into life, we talking eternal life here. You know Jesus know how to get it, right? That's right. If thou were in an into life, keep the commandments. He didn't say just call on me and trust in me, son, did he? No, son. He said keep the commandments. Go ahead. And he saith unto him, which? Now this guy, he said which commandments? Because you had sacrificial laws and all that. Well, the only sacrifice we got to be concerned with is believing in Jesus. So he answered that. Which, which commandments? Go ahead. Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Uh -huh. Honor thy father and thy mother. Uh -huh. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He started running down the commandments, right? Yeah. All of this to get light is still in the commandments. Still in the commandments. And then you can read the rest on your own. He said, well, I've been doing that. And Jesus told him, well, you know, you, you, he was rich. He said, you can sell and help the poor. So he had some more stuff that he can do. And the man went away sad. But some people read that. See, he told him something else. Yeah, but you can't forget what he told him at first. If you ain't rich, you ain't even got to worry about the latter part, right? That's right. I mean, you can help people that you can help when you, when, when you, the opportunity is there if you got anything. But hey, some of us might need some help. So we wouldn't even fit in here at all, right? That's right. We need some help from the rich right now, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't fit here at all. So what do we have to worry about? What he said, to get life, keep the commandments. But people want to do anything. They always try to uh, put it on another issue to get away from the clear facts of the matter. Let's go to Deuteronomy 30. He started running down the law to him. Jesus did to get eternal life. He started running it down and concluded by saying, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as yourself. Back to the law of love, right? Deuteronomy 30. See, this is what we got to realize. We got to make this choice ourselves. He ain't going to make nobody do it either. He ain't going to make nobody. He telling you to choose life. Like people say about, you know, abortion. Choose life where well, God been telling you that a long time ago about serving him or not. 
Deuteronomy 30 and 15. Okay, go ahead. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. See, and, and somebody that might hear this for the first time, where well, it's been set before you this day. Life and good, death and evil, and we have to choose. And we see we got specific criteria for what we need to choose, and it's God's law. Go ahead, 16. And that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. See, that's what's going to... Loving the Lord is going to be how you live, isn't it? That you may love the Lord by walking in his ways, keep his commandments, his statutes, his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. Now this is talked to Israel when they was going into the promised land. See, you have some preachers tell you, see, that was just for them back then. We got Jesus, now we don't need it. Look, we're going to see it's the same thing for them back then as, as it is for us. And it's still, they was going into the promised land. Believe it or not, we're trying to get into some land too. We ain't trying to go up to heaven. That's what people didn't got food on too. Look, the goal is for the kingdom to be on this earth, right here on some land. We trying to inherit eternal life in some land, just like they was going into the land. Go ahead. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whether thou goest to possess it. Uh huh. But if thine turn, but if thine heart turn away, so that thou will not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. Uh huh. What did he say? I denounce unto you this day. That ye shall surely perish, mm -hmm. and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether thou goest over the Jordan to go to possess it. See, he said, you're not going to prolong your days, which we didn't. That's why we got kicked off into captivity. Israel is in slavery. That's how you can identify Israel today. God did what he said and sent us into slavery for disobedience. So they, he denounced and told them that would happen. Because they were disobedient. We worship false gods. Our forefathers did. And all of that. Verse 19 though. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Uh -huh. That I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. See this is what God set before us to this day. We have to choose. He said I set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. Therefore what? Therefore choose life. That both thou and thy seed may live. See, he told you to choose life. Back here, didn't he? Choose life. But how do you choose life? By keeping his law. 